Hello and welcome to the SciShow talk show where we talk on SciShow. Today we are joined by our very special guest, Emily Grassley of The Brain Scoop. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Today, you're going to attempt to stump me and then we're going to talk about some news and then we're going to visit an animal. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds awesome. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea about any of those things. I don't know what animal, I don't know what you want to talk about, and I don't know what you brought in. So let's just go. Let's do it. What, what <laughs> did you bring me? Skulls? Yes, bones? I did. Let's start you with this. Me, she's going to stop me with bones because I did so well last time. I it's even, a shoebox. Well, no, I taped over the label. So even if you knew the binomial nomenclature. Is... I probably do. I'm very, very clever. So it's you, a head. It is a head. Ooh. You, you want to hold it? Well, look at those teeth. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. If you can get the animal, then I'm going to ask you what you think those teeth are for. I think that they're for awesome. Hmm. I mean, this is making me, this is, I mean, it looks, well. Well, there you go. There it is together. It fits very well. Mm -hmm. Has good teeth. Mm -hmm. Good job. It's got nose stuff. It's got a big head. Yep. Do you know what it eats? Do you know where it lives? Um, I, I don't. I imagine <laughs> it's a terrestrial mammal. Kind of. I'm not even, I've already made a mistake. <laughs> I went with, ter it has four legs. Kinda. Kinda? Kinda. How does, it, you are always doing this to me and then it turns out that it's like a pig. And I'm like, how does a pig <laughs> kinda have four legs? I um, mean, it does have four legs, but I don't think it uses them in the way that you think it might use them. Well, how else do you use legs? Well, it's, it's just, when I think of something with four legs, I'm thinking like doo doo, something like ah. Are you saying that it has it has four legs, but it walks on two? No, kind of. It walks more like on three legs. How? What walks on three legs? It's just it's just how they're the, the motion, how they use them. I mean, like I was I was thinking like taper, but it can't. It's not a taper. Mm. I don't know. Do you want me to tell you, or do you want to keep guessing? Give me another hint. Where does it live? Very, very cold places. Oh. Oh. Is it a, is it a marine mammal? Mm -hmm. Is it a sea lion? Close, is so it a close. Seal? Yes. It's a seal. It's a very special seal. How does a seal walk on, ah, oh, I guess it's too Yeah, back because legs it's got the hint, 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 hint. Okay. <laughs> Just like that, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I guess it's back legs are sort of like a mermaid thing yeah. happened. Huh, I would know, yeah. So these are these are meat ripping teeth then. Well, actually no. No. Um, this is what is called a crab eater seal. It doesn't eat any crab. Oh. I don't know who thought of that name, but it, it's, uh, they, they eat no crabs because crabs don't exist in, it's from the Antarctic. Crabs right. don't live in Antarctica. Big um, animal. So it's a crab eater seal. It actually is the fastest of all seals on land. It's the fastest pinniped. Um, they can move up to like 15 miles an hour. Running. 25 kilometers. Yeah, wow. just by like flipping around. It's like a back end. Um, and it has the most specialized teeth of any carnivore in the world. Um, these little ridges on the teeth are called tubercles. And when you put the mandible on it, you saw how well they fit together mm -hmm. and they use it as a sieve so they can like suck in water it's from like up to like baleen. yeah exactly and uh they'll like suck in a krill from up to like you know a foot away or so mm -hmm. and then they just expel all the water and um they'll do this they'll feed for about 16 hours a day wow i want teeth like that nope that was fascinating so what, do you have something else that you would like to share? Yes, exciting, exciting news. Okay. Can you tell what I'm thinking? Can you read my mind? I think it may have something to do with rat telepathy. It does. Because you just said that before we started rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this week, some uh, scientific report was published in um, a science journal. Um, there is a neuroscientist from Duke University that confirmed rats can communicate through electrode implants in their brains. So, the, it's crazy to me, it, like sci-fi blows my mind. Um, they had one rat that was in North Carolina and one rat that was in Brazil and they both gave them brain implants, like electrode brain implants and they had 
uh, one of the rats was the sender and one was the receiver, and they had them go through this series of tests. So the sender rat was in a lit box, and the receiver rat, all the way, you know, thousands of miles away, was in a dark box. And they had the first rat solve a series of problems, and then as it solved the problems, it, the signal was sent, it was encoded and sent through the internet to the receiver rat that completed the same tests totally in the dark, like visual tests that require the rat to be able to see. So the rat in the dark is basically seeing what the rat in the light is seeing. Yeah. And this is, they're just taking whatever like, like analog signal is coming off of the rat and just throwing that back in as it came off. Yeah, like reading the electronic signals being fired off of the brain of the first rat and then kind of jumbling them up and retranslating them into like electric signals that the receiver rat could pick up. And just like, you know, like push this button on, on in a little box and you'll get a water reward or something like that. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And so right now... So when, how long is it before they do this to me and I can, like, see what you're dreaming while you're dreaming? I don't know. So, and they talked about how, like, abstract thoughts like that are a little further off in the future, right. of course. Um, but for now, they are hoping that they can, for one, to make this thing wireless because right now the rats, they have something breeding the things from their... Got the, a big old thing the in their head. Yeah, from the yeah. brain. So they're thinking they want to test this by making it wireless and then putting one of the receiver rats in with a bunch of other rats and then still trying to do like brain control on it and get it to respond to the first rat's brain mm. signals, which is crazy. This is a brave new world. Yeah, it, exactly. It's freaking me out. Yeah. Again, uh, another, another moment in SciShow talk show where I feel uncomfortable about the future. <laughs> a little bit. I but, I mean, there are good things. They're thinking about how they can adapt this to humans, and everyone's first notion is like, oh, my gosh, like military brain yep. control or something mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, that might happen. On a brighter note, they're hoping that they can use this um, for amputee victims with prosthetics right. to recreate feeling, sensations and feelings of touch. Mm -hmm. Which is very positive That's and cool. a lot less creepy to think about. <laughs> so. Also, maybe they could just use it to teach me how to do stuff. Yeah. And I wouldn't have to learn oh, yeah. things. I could just do kung fu. That'd be pretty awesome. So now we are going to meet an animal. Mm -hmm. Jesse from Animal Wonders will be bringing us something I'm not sure what yet. Jesse has arrived from Animal Wonders with an animal. That is wonderful. <laughs> Good introduction. This is Zoe, and she's a Red Lord Amazon parrot. What Red Lord? Red Lord. What do I think? Wait, I think where do you think I she think comes pretty, from? I think it's a pretty bird. I think it probably <laughs> comes from the Amazon. She does. Yep, the Amazon. All right, she is a Red Lord. There's about 20 different species of Amazon parrots, and it's kind of difficult to tell them apart. Mostly, it's the... So very specific coloration patterns on their on face. On the face. Yeah, and sometimes on their shoulders. Yeah. What, is, what is she saying? She's chirping at us. She's talking. She is, yeah. Zoe likes to pretend she's part of the conversation. Oh, so we're just chatting. Yeah. Okay. We're just, we're just talking back and forth. Um, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like a seed? Oh, I dropped it. Uh, you dropped you want to wave? Yeah, that's my wave. Uh, good girl. Uh oh. Dang it. There's a new one. Huh? Dang it. <laughs> there you go. Is her tongue black? Her tongue's black Whoa. and dry. That's pretty metal. <laughs> <laughs> and if you notice, she's actually peeling her sunflower seeds. Oh, I don't like that sh shell on the outside of the Yeah, she's, she's a little spoiled. Oh, wow, yeah. A little prissy. I don't even do that. <laughs> you just eat the whole thing? Well, I take the shell off. No, she, she breaks the shell off and then she like also the... peels the, the skin. Oh, yeah. weird. Yeah. That is very Pretty picky. Silly, huh? That's With her very mouth. picky. Yeah. What else do you want to do? Do you have a? That's amazingly dexterous there. Here, oh. Would you like this peanut? What's well, that? You know? Good girl. <gasps> Take a look at how she eats it. Oh my gosh. I know what I'm doing. I'm just making sure there's no shell on this thing. <laughs> you get that's that annoying. skin off of that too. <laughs> <laughs> She's messy. Messy eater, I'm glad you mentioned that. Birds are very messy eaters, and it's kind of important that they're messy eaters because 
they live in the jungle, and they're going to be eating all the time, going through the trees. They, they live in flocks of up to 100. Wow. And so they're just going to go through the jungle and just eat as fast as they can in one tree and move on. So they're going to be dropping a lot of things, and a lot of times it's going to be seeds, whole seeds or pieces of fruit or something like that. And so they're going to be <laughs> um, going through the forest and kind of be gardeners. You're just going to yeah. plant, plant, plant things. Plant seeds. Can all parrots like learn how to communicate, or birds is like what? It, what is the distinction between birds that can vocalize like that? Like mimic human words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's mostly it's in the citizen family that can oh, okay. do it. So even the little teeny tiny Pacific parrotlets that are about this big, they can they can do that. It's you know it's limited, and then right. the the best you know all the way up to the cockatoo and the macaw that are huge. Um, they say the best two speakers are the um, African gray parrot and the um, yellow-headed Amazon parrot. Wow. Those are the two. How about this one? Ready? You shot her. <laughs> <laughs> I like to show off how she uses her I know, I know. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> I like to use that um, behavior when we're doing educational presentations um, to show off her amazing feet. Mm -hmm. You can see those feet. She has two toes on the front and two toes on the back. Do you know the words for that, Emily? B uh, oh. Spaced it. Spaced it. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Zygodactylus. Oh, that's what it was. So two toes on the front, two toes on the back, and let's try that again. Ready? Pew. Oh, just one foot. One foot one showing foot. off. So they can hang upside down on their own, <laughs> grab foods that other birds wouldn't be able to find. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh, Zoe? Thank you, Zoe, for visiting us here at the SciShow Talk Show. Thank you, Jesse, for bringing her in. Thanks for having us. Thank you for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Thank you to Emily Grassley for joining us and to Jesse from Animal Wonders. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>